Hello and welcome back to Speeder on the Fast Talking Video Game Podcast where we talk about pretty much anything weird, retro, or otherwise that interests us. Coming to you today from beautiful Victoria, British Columbia. We're seriously, it's we're, it's, we're in cherry blossom season here right now and I just wanted to mention that right off the bat. Anyways, as always, I am Jamie. I'm Jazzy coming to you from sunny Cleveland, Ohio. This is our one sunny day of the year and it is nice outside. Mm, I can almost hear the tourism video music. Yeah, no. And joining we see this us on, oh, oh, three sorry, times a year. Three, three times, times a year in the year. tourism video. Yeah, does the river still catch on fire? Always. But joining us today to talk Mega Man X is the one and only Jay's Reviews. Welcome to the show. Hi guys. Welcome. Thanks for having me. So, well, thank you for coming on. I've been watching you for a few years now, uh, ever since I found your Mega Man X retrospective specifically. I think I was looking for vids on X6 because uh, that would do it. Well, yeah, I, I'm sh- yeah. I, I think I think we'll talk about X6 in a bit because mm-hmm. it's a it's an interesting one. Yeah, it's a, it's an experiment. Yeah, it's it's an experience. Yeah, but uh, yeah. Do you want to just quickly tell the audience what you do? Well, I am a game review channel, and I know there's a lot of those, so it's hard to say what I specifically try to focus on. Like, I've been at some points, I've uh, tried to do more of, like, an analytical show. There's been at some points where I tried to do more of a casual show. I've done cartoons, I've done movies, I've done, uh, you know, just just straight-up video games. I've tried to do a little bit of everything of what's like considered how you make a video game review, but I've covered, well, we're talking about Mega Man X, but I've also... Covered Sonic in depth, uh, Devil May Cry, uh, Sly Cooper. Want to do other stuff like Resident Evil and other things. So yeah, I hope that uh, gives us perspective on how my show goes. Indeed. Yes. And specifically today, as I start our 15 minute timer, we are going to be talking about Mega Man X the best, the worst, and the weirdest. So, Jazz, to start off, uh, how how much experience do you have with Mega Man X? Uh, zero. And that's why I'm really zero. happy to be on the on this episode. Not like I'm not on all the other episodes. But my experience with Mega Man extends to uh, Mega Man 2 for the NES, obviously, as everyone does. And then um, Battle Network for the GBA, which we still need to make the video on the metal GBA. But that is my whole exposure to the Mega Man franchise, aside of the show and the manga. So Ooh, I'm really excited good. to learn something today. I really like the manga. <laughs> it's really good. Jay, have you read the, the Mega Mix or Giga Mix manga? You know, when it comes to Mega Man stuff that's not the games, I actually don't have much experience. Like, even, like, reading stuff like Archie Comics. So mangas are definitely out for me. Haven't done that. For sure. So I guess before we dive in, um, so Jazzy, you're unfamiliar with the series. I am kind of boring and just discovered uh, the X series through, uh, I can't, I don't remember if it was, if I got X1 off the Wii shop or if I got my copy of Maverick Hunter X for Christmas first. But Jay, how did you get introduced to the series? Well, for me... Um, Mega Man X, I, I talked about this in one video that was, uh, I forget, I think it was probably the first X review that I did, but it was also more of a recent video where I've talked about this. For me, with Mega Man, I got into it like I got into a lot of stuff where it's uh, YouTube videos. And I, I feel like it's kind of like a new age thing, but I'm probably not the only person who, like, you know, a lot of the games, I like I just said, a lot of the games I play are because of YouTubers like uh, Zelda or Metal Gear, like, Mega Man's on that list where, like, you know, people like Some Call Me Johnny would talk about it. And I was like, well, let me give that a chance. I got Mega Man X and Mega Man 7 on the Wii U eShop in, like, 2014. Like, 7 I thought looked interesting, but, like, X was more of, like, a popular entry in the series. I actually liked 7 more at first because I got my, my butt kicked in X1 when I first played it. But later on, I gave it another shot, and it just, like, quickly, like, took one of the spots in one of my favorite games. And it just, well, it's all history from there. Like, playing the X series, the Zero series, Classic series, and ZX, Legends. And, well, I never played the RPG series, but, you know. Right. So, 
I, no, I, it's funny you mention that because I it's a new age thing, but it's definitely something that happens a lot. Like uh, one of my favorite RPG series is the East series, and uh, my love for that series can single handedly be uh, attributed to Happy Console Gamer. I've heard of those. I remember that those guys. I haven't seen them in years. I just the the name just like instantly rung a bell for me. Yeah, Johnny who does that's actually just in Vancouver, which is just across the water for me, which is funny because it's so close and yet uh i'm actually going over there for the first time in a, a bit which is a uh, i don't know it's, it's, cool. it's funny but that's not here nor there so talking about the series itself what would you say just quickly what would you say is the highest point and the lowest point when it comes to like just the games themselves like best game worst game yeah as far as the x series okay. goes Mega Man x is easily the best one uh all around uh, i've said things to the contrary before but that's my uh people should always just assume that whatever you've heard me say the most recently was is my current opinion uh, i changed my mind a lot but like x1 pretty regularly is at like the top of the list so I'm, i just it's always a game i can go back to so i just have that set at the favorite then the worst I personally still just have it set at X6, although X7 is basically as bad. So, uh, I what would it be fair to say, going off something you said, though, is that what I guess uh, I say this as well as someone with reviewer experience, that a lot of folks need to understand that opinions do change over time, especially like as you know we play more games mm -hmm. and new games come out and such. Yep. Yeah, I think that's definitely like, a thing. I mean, uh. I, I've, I've changed my mind on a lot of stuff like my if I made Metal Gear videos now They'd be different than they when I originally did if I did uh, Devil May Cry videos again. They'd be different. It's just like I Don't know. I, I think it's just kind of it's kind of an easy thing for audiences to like when well when the review is out Like it's gospel, you know, but it's like oh for me. It's really mm -hmm. not I just that that's just what I happen to be feeling that particular day Right or like uh, like when I first started YouTubing I was a teenager and <clears throat> Sorry and I had it held over my head uh, when I said in one video that, yeah, I really like Mega Man X3. But, and someone was like, but you said it was a bad game when you were a teenager. I was like, yeah. And since then, I've, I've, got, I, and since then I've gone to college and yeah. gotten I mean, I was 14 a job. when my first video came out on the Jay's Reviews account. So it's just like, yeah. I, I remember I actually re-uploaded a compilation of those old videos. I deleted them like a few months after they came out. But I just last year, I re-uploaded all my old videos I deleted. And like I wrote in the description... Nothing I say in these videos matters. Please don't ask me about it. And then, of course, it comes, but why would you say that? It's just like, I don't know. I don't even know why I said it. Well, I mean, so, sometimes you got to upload something for you for you as well, right? Because, like, I'm, I'd imagine coming across old vids like that, it's almost like finding a time capsule from when you were yeah, younger, that's, right? Yeah, that's why I don't delete a lot of videos, actually. I delete... Uh, I, I I used to delete stuff because oh what do people see the old stuff but like I want to just have it up because it's like well this is me this is how I've evolved from this point to now so yeah that's why I see value in keeping old stuff around. If I can insert a personal anecdote, I don't want to derail the discussion too no, no, far. No, absolutely. <clears throat> but speaking specifically to all the other content creators out there listening. It is really, really important to save all of your old work, no matter how cringe you may think it is. Because um, as over at my parents and we were doing a family movie night, as we as we normally do fairly regularly, and we happened we happened across a tape that was <laughs> me at age thirteen giving a tutorial on how to play through the fire and flames, and I was like. 12 or 13 at the time and i was just Aww. like oh this is so bad but my partner and my parents were like this is adorable so if you have old stuff of old you definitely keep it if not for anyone else for you i would most certainly uh, agree with that in a, in a heartbeat that's why i do it. absolutely one of my biggest regrets is my first ever youtube video and this was before I ran that Let's Play channel as a teenager. When I was 10 years old, my dad had a YouTube channel that he basically just used as a place to back up family vid videos. Since, uh, like, he, he got a fancy new... Get this, he got a fancy new digital camera <laughs> that he could hook up via USB. Whoa! Ooh. And, like, I uploaded, like, one part of, a like, a Pokemon Let's Play on there. It wasn't very good. I was using, like, an old, like... Garage band mic. Oh but man. I, but I regret deleting that as a teenager because yeah, 
it was, I thought it still would probably be a little cringy to look back on, but that's 10 year old me, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah, it's cute. So getting back on the Mega Man X topic, uh -huh. you, you talked about going back and forth between X6 and X7, uh, what, as the worst, would you say that, uh, the, they're bad for two completely different reasons? That's definitely fair to say. Because, I mean, X6, you can say, plays like X4 and X5, which are, you know, X4 is really good, and X5 is, like, you know, at, at best, it's, like, good. So, like, with X6, you can at least have that going for it, whereas X7 has, like, a unique, like, feel to it, which is uniquely terrible. And, mm -hmm. you know, X7 is also <laughs> boring, and it's also really frustrating at times. It, it's all the worst kinds of ways to make a bad game, and is what X7 is. And uh, But X6 is just pure frustration. And the funny thing is, is that right now, I don't find X6 that hard. It's only just because I played it up in the video so much because I was trying to, like, reflect the first playthrough of X6, which is... It's L. So, uh, and that's how I feel about it. I feel like if a first playthrough is just that frustrating, I'm still not going to, like, let go of that fact, even if I played X6 the first time at this point, like, six years ago. Right. Th that said, like, and again, not not to derail, but, like, with, with, with X6, you know, I find a weird sense of enjoyment going back to it because it's so easy to just break the game. Indeed, uh, with like, especially if you unlock like Ultimate Armor X or like Black Armor Zero, you can like really be extremely powerful. Because it's like if you know what you're doing, the game's pretty easy. Yeah, but but I think that's a really you know fair fair take on X7 as well because it, it does try to be different, uh, and it fails in a spectacularly boring way. Yeah, and then you also get stuff that actually is pretty frustrating, like some of the boss fights. So it, it's like a proper mix of all kinds of terrible. Yeah, and oh god, what what's that one stage of the airplanes? Wind uh, crow rain. Wind crow rain. Yeah. 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 Terrible. So moving on though, because we are the weird and retro podcast. What is the weirdest game in the series, hands down? You can't choose Command Mission because it's an RPG. Okay. Well, uh, I wouldn't pick any of the eight games for the weirdest one. I guess I would pick the ex the. The first Mega Man Extreme, I suppose. I mean, you could really pick either one, but if you look at that, those games, I mean, I especially always have just loved or found it kind of funny how in both games they took the story like really seriously, even though it's like a Game Boy Color Mega Man X game to the point where like in Extreme 1, you get this like two minute long death scene for like two of the characters. It's just, it was completely goofy. And it's just, you wonder if anybody like thought that while they made it. I know the characters you're talking about, and didn't one of them literally have, like, three lines of dialogue before they killed him yes. off? Yes, and, like, literally there's, like, a dramatic, like, 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 art of him, like, dying in his brother's arms. It's just, like, it was really funny. Also, like, Extreme 1, for those who haven't played it, it, it it's not a bad game. No. It, I know. I, I played it as a kid in a pre-Mega Man X Legacy collection on Switch time. It's a great way to get in your Mega Man X fill on a car trip. It has three different campaigns, except they aren't separate as campaigns. Uh -huh. It's like a They're normal, separated... hard, and like extreme difficulty. Yeah, it's separating the three difficulty modes, except the difficulty is the ex exactly the same, and they are just literally completely different campaigns. Yeah, it was really weird. I guess it's just a way to make the game longer, because extreme mode is basically, and in both games, the extreme slash like X and Zero campaigns is basically how you should play the game, but... Like, to get there, that's like, that would make the game shorter. So they just, like, do, first you have to do normal, half of it, then hard, half of it, and then you can get, like, the full game. It's it's definitely the best way to play it as well, though, because there's no cutscenes, and, like, why, why do we need, like, five-minute cutscenes in a Game Boy Color game, you know? Yeah, seriously. Especially a Mega Man one. Yeah. That, that said, like... The Game Boy Mega Man games in general are pretty dang... Like, I'm biased, but, like, those are ones I grew up with. Four, especially. Uh, Classic Four and Game Boy. Frickin' love those games. Uh, are, so, in Mega Man in general, and we can go into a, a, another episode just talk about 
you know, our, our favorite underrated Mega Man games, but what are some of the most underrated games in the series, you think? For just for Mega As Man in general? Okay. Yeah. Underrated, I guess that's kind of hard to say. If only because, like, you know, I feel like the answer to this question would be a lot different in, like, 2014 than it would be in 2021 because now we have, like, on PS4 and Steam and Switch and Xbox, you can get Mega Man's 1 through 10 and X is 1 through 8 and Zero is 1 through 4 and the ZX games all, like, on one console. So I guess at that rate, mm -hmm. I would just say the most underrated Mega Man games would be the Legends games on PS1 because, you know, we haven't seen a major re-release of those, especially in the West. I think there was PSP ports of them in Japan, but uh, the Legends duology especially is just, I remember really enjoying those and they, yeah, they just don't really uh, have, they don't have much of a modern audience. And of course, Legends 3 got canceled. It's just kind of unfortunate that it's uh, didn't get the legacy collection treatment, although it might, you know, uh, I wouldn't hey. be surprised. If we get it, I hope they they re-release Misadventures of Tron Bon as well. Absolutely, that would be a good that would be a good uh, get as well. I mean, yeah. besides, it would make the game worth more, and that's what they want, right? So, yeah. Exactly, like, yeah, because I'd re I really I'd really like that. You're you're like, yeah, you're spot on Legends games because I think yeah, I've never played two, but I loved Legends one. Even if I, if the way I played it back in the day was uh, the very. Uh, I guess not butchered, but the not quite as good N64 version. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I never played the 64 version. I've only played it on PlayStation. If I remember right, think of the PS1 version, but with, like, fog. Yeah, like, worse draw distance, worse sound quality. The typical stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I guess before the timer uh, ends up, question about Mega Man Legends 3. Do you think they'll ever get him off the moon? I don't think it's impossible, to be honest. I really don't. I mean, I don't know where the next Mega Man game is. I mean, honestly. Uh, I, From what I heard, Mega Man 11 was a hit. so Or a, at least a, a decent enough success for Mega Man standards. So I definitely think that should, should, have, should have been like reason to get more games. So... Uh, Last we heard, like, last I heard, there was, like, the next main game was in development, so I don't know what where that's at, I, I don't know if it'd be an X game or a classic, but, uh, back to Legend 3, certainly not impossible. Uh, I think that it's probably not going to happen anytime soon if it were to happen, but I don't think it's impossible either. Fair take. So with that, we're at time... Uh, Jay, again, thank you so much for coming on this episode. Y'all should check him out on YouTube. He makes fantastic videos. And he's also part of an elite group of people of uh, that includes myself and uh, a few other YouTubers that actually like Sonic Advance 3. That's a fact. That's a fact. It's a good game. I didn't know I was in that club until you just until you just mentioned it. But now I know that the people exist. I'm glad to hear it because the game is pretty oh, dope. Oh, the game's great, but... That that can be a talk for another episode. Sure. Yeah. Jay, where can people find you? Just on the YouTube, the the Jay's Reviews YouTube channel. I used to have more, um, like, like some other accounts on YouTube for other content, but I don't really do that stuff anymore, like Let's Plays. And uh, I have a, I have a Twitter uh, at Jay's Reviews too, but uh, uh, I don't really I use Twitter a lot, but I don't post on Twitter a lot. So I guess I, it's not like a main way to keep in touch with me, just mainly the YouTube. Absolutely. And of course, this has been Speedrun, and we are made possible in part by Podbean. Do you want to start a podcast of your own? Then why not look into getting some podcast hosting through Podbean? We'd love to hear you out on the, on the airwaves. Well, I can't speak. It, airwaves? Is that, is that a term that's used in podcasting? Yeah, it's still used. All right, so we'd love to hear you out on the airwaves. So if you'd like to get some podcast hosting of your own, then go to podbean.com slash speedrun and or use the code speedrun at checkout. Also, Jazzy, you edit these episodes. Would you like to plug what you do? I would like to plug what we do. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay? I'm very professional, don't you know? Um... This episode and this whole podcast is produced and edited by ClevelandAudioMixology.com. Um, I work with a great audio producer, and we both work on this podcast and other podcasts and music and albums and projects of all sizes. Excellent. So on that note, 
Uh, Speedrun is also made possible in part by Stuff We Play, or rather, we are part of the Stuff We Play channel. If you would like to support us, uh, get your name in the credits of Stuff We Play YouTube videos, or get access to Speedrun episodes a week earlier, or a week early, then why not back us on Patreon at patreon.com slash stuff we play. So on that note, I have been Jamie. I have been Jazzy. Thank you very much for listening. Stay classy and we'll see you next time. Zia.